I think it is a deserved prize. What your opinion has done for peace, and this is exactly the main, let's say, um, goal of the Nobel Peace Prize, is remarkable. In fact, I have to be very sincere with you, I had a secret hope mm. for some years already that one day the European Union will be recognized as deserving the Nobel Peace Prize. So we're talking about European values, the idea of Europe. Is there any particular moment in your life when you realized that uh, a common European cause is worth fighting for? Look, uh, it was linked to my experience in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I've told you, um, we had a democratic revolution in 74. I was 18 years of age. I was already against the previous regime. I was at that time a very radical student, uh, <laughs> demonstrating against uh, uh, the regime. And for, for my generation in Portugal, like the same generation in Spain or Greece, and later we saw this in Poland and in all the Central Eastern European countries, also the Baltic countries, Europe is above all freedom. As we've talked about, the EU has been a promoter of democracy in many countries, including the one you grew up in. But then, is it not a, a paradox that the EU is constantly being criticized for a democratic deficit uh, itself? The system is not perfect, and that there is a perceived distance uh, between citizens and institutions. Yes, we want to address this problem, but partly this is due to the fact that we don't have yet a European public space. Mm. We have uh, 27, I sometimes say 28 public spaces, the sp public space of each of our country, mm. plus the space of discussion here in the European institutions, in Brussels or in Strasbourg with the European Parliament. But progressively we have to make um, this um, public space become more real so that uh, the European democracy is not only a formal democracy but becomes more material, let's say in substance, uh, a project of participation. One thing is to recognize what our shortcomings are and they are uh, real our problems. Another thing is to put at risk this great project of peace and of freedom and solidarity that the European Union is and will continue to be. Has it been difficult uh, to use humor and be interested in people during all these uh, crisis uh, summits? Have you ever wanted to just tell everyone to pack everything and go home and go back to Portugal? In some cases the only uh, weapon we have is humor. And to be fair, these negotiations sometimes are painful, but at the end we come to the results. Negotiations are extremely important. Uh, and uh, I personally don't like uh, in the um, politics or diplomacy, those people that go for a negotiation as a kind of a, a zero-sum game. I win against the other. A negotiation is one with the other, not one against the other. In response to questions about the lack of efficient solutions to the debt crisis, you have responded several times that it's important to remember that this is a marathon and not a sprint. But even a marathon has a, has a finishing line. Do you see any sign of that uh, finishing line and, uh, on the horizon? We are closer, but not yet there, to be honest. Huh? The other day I received the same question of you, but compared to a football match, and my answer uh, was, we are in the beginning of the second half. <laughs> okay. The first, but we are happy. No, no, no player went out against all the predictions. We are keeping all, te all our team intact. And now we are in the first, half, the first part of the second half. Let's keep the team motivated, focused until the end so that we can score a goal and avoid a prolongation for extra time. I believe that's where we are in this moment fa facing the financial crisis in Europe.